your life in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. I'm Chaslin from the Upper Skagit Library. And I'm Tina from, from Upper Skagit Library. What, Lolly? It's slow. It's slow. That's okay. It's got lag. That's all right. <laughs> Bear with us today, folks. We're doing the uh, the technology thing, which, as you know, is always a hilarious process. Um, but it should all be pretty good. Let me make sure that I'm getting not getting an echo of myself, which is totally distracting. But, you know, we can work with it. It's fine. Uh, anyway, hello. It is uh, November the 3rd. And it is a beautiful, glorious, rainy day in beautiful downtown concrete. <laughs> and this is the In Stitches program for the month. So Miss Tina has brought in some stuff with crocheting and cross stitch. And she's going to show us stuff that she's working on. She's going to get us started on doing some stuff if we're new. And uh, I'm kind of really excited myself to see what we're doing this time. So I was going to just kind of hand it off to you, Miss Tina, and let you take the lead. Okay. Um, to let everybody know, we have uh, was it, uh, cute critters. It's all crocheted. And I am doing a turtle. So I am still, st I'm still starting out. And this is what I have so far part of a shell. Oh, and I just learned myself how to do what's called a magic circle. And that's a, a type of stitch. That's it is a stitch to start you out on. What it is is you take, uh, hold the tail. <laughs> Excuse me, down like so. And then bring the yarn down, cross, and over the top of the three fingers. Then you insert your needle underneath, grab the uh, yarn, bring it up, and you tr twist it. Okay. Then you go back over the stitch, the top stitch, and bring it through. Oops. Sorry. It took me a while for me to get the hang of it. Through your loop. And so that makes a like a perfect circle kind of thing. Right. And then what you do is pull the, whoops, where's my tail? There's my tail. Okay, you want the tail to be on the outside. So then what you do is, is you take your hook, grab the yarn, or excuse me, go under into the loop, grab your yarn, and bring it up, and you'll have two stitches on the needle. Oh. And then you grab the yarn again, and you bring it through the, the two um, chains. Okay. For instance, we'll do, I'll show you, you'll do like, for example, six of these. Three, four, come on. Five, and six. Okay, then once you get the last stitch in, is you take your tail and you pull to form a circle. Oh, mine's not quite making a circle. Then you take the hook and you go through the first loop of your first stitch. If I can get it. Come on. Sorry. It's just one of those days today. <laughs> Come on. Well, okay. it's, it looks like it takes a lot of finger dexterity, uh, you know, at least cool. trying to, to get some of the, the first stitches yeah. in. 
Yeah, then what you do is then you grab your yarn and go through the first two, the, through the two chains, bring it up, and then you chain one. That starts you off on your um, design of the turtle that I started. Okay. And then you take the yarn and go. through the center of your circle, bring the yarn, oops, you're not supposed to come off. <laughs> Grab your yarn, bring it up, and then you just um, pull yarn through those two stitches and you go around until you have, for instance, like, you start this one off with the turtle, you do 10 single chains. And then when you're on your second one, you do two, single crochet uh, stitches together in one loop. Okay. And then you're supposed to skip, um, you're only supposed to put a single crochet in the next hole and then go to, to where you have a total, when you get to the end, after chaining, um, connecting your circle and ending your chain, uh, with the chain one, you'll have 20 stitches around your circle. Okay, For instance, interesting. This right here is your second row. Oh, so that has 20. I started my third row. But the book um, tells you how many stitches are supposed to be on the circle. Okay, when you go around, I find it the Sorry, uh, I find it easier if you take a safety pin and pin each circle so that you know what circle you are on when you place it to lay it down when you're going to take care of something. So oh, you, so like you don't lose your place. Place, right. So you when you come back, you yourself. can count, count those, uh, like for me, safety pins, and that will tell you what road that you've been, you were at and then you go from there. Oh, I like that. Because I, I, I'm one of those people that I get interrupted or distracted quite often. And so I, I would I would be constantly counting just to, to find out where I was. But that makes it way faster and easier. I'm with you, Chaslyn. I don't know how many <laughs> times I tore this thing out because I've lost number of pounds or where I was at. It's like, okay, I'm done. Right. <laughs> Start all yeah, over again. Sorry. To me, it seems like crochet is like, it's, it's very detail oriented and, and you have to really be organized a, to not just get everything into a big tangled mess, which is what I would do is cause I would just turn it into a huge knot just because by not paying attention. So it's just one of those things where it's like, you take your time and you make sure that you're organized about it. And it's, it's once you have that, that almost seems like the hardest part to me. It's like the actual movements themselves aren't the hard part it's just making sure you're organized enough to really be where you're supposed to be yeah i uh found out with my container here mm. if you get one of these the best thing to do is leave the paper around your yarn and pull the thread your yarn through the center through the oh. hole so that you don't have it all <laughs> not up on you <laughs> You don't have like a dog or a cat coming to steal all of your stuff. It's just, it's all in a container. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even with, even with my container, uh, my cat Ruby, she likes to come over and, and pull as far as she can go with it. <laughs> so it's, it's a good way to, to keep yourself organized, but also to keep everyone from messing up your stuff. <laughs> right. Um, I love it. Yeah. It, to let other uh, let you all know, like in this book that I'm using, they have giraffes, <laughs> zebras, zebra snails. Oh, the snails cute. <laughs> Let's see. Um, where's my monkey? Look, there's and they have a monkey. Oh, that's adorable. That's gonna be like the new like sock monkey trend. I <laughs> remember that from a yes. few, a few yep. years back. Those were great. And um, shoot, I didn't print it out, but um, 
the eyes and the nose they are uh, you can get them from michael's what it is it's a hard plastic that's got like a screw on the back oh but then you have a uh i call them washers and as you push them on they lock so, so they stay in place better they stay in place and if you're worried that um for smaller children like uh, little babies you're uh, i would suggest that you um take a needle uh and just make eyes and nose mm. on your um animals like make them out of cloth or something or not cloth well, no, uh, the, um, the out of the yarn yeah Aww. um i'll try to hold this one up but like here's a cat that's got whiskers oh yeah all somebody did was take a needle make the whiskers and tied it off cute okay so that's uh would be safe for an infant uh, if you don't want to try the um the plastic bead 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 eyes <laughs> oh yeah yeah um, so is this your first time doing a, a pattern uh using a pattern to make stuff like this yes this is my first <laughs> do and... you like it so far like using a pattern does it help or is it harder because you're so used to doing it your own way it's harder for me because i'm used to doing it my own way <laughs> so i need to break that habit <laughs> right that, well um, this, it, it, I, I would imagine that if you learn how to use a pattern then you could also like deviate from the pattern and then you could yeah. like start making your own changes well, to yeah, it yeah exactly so um, that'll be fun i'm trying to get a hold of some pat patterns off of uh tiktok oh really on the TikTok, they show these ladies will hold up a, like there's a wall, a yarn behind them, and they'll hold a uh, skein of yarn. And just all of a sudden, it's like poof, and then they have the animal. And it's like, I've seen <laughs> some cute animals on that that I absolutely Who would have love. thought that TikTok would be Crochet Haven? I love it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's neat because you can actually like, because you're like sometimes on Pinterest, like it's, it's still, so you can't really get a sense of the movements that they're doing, but with a video, you can see what they're doing. Well, actually you don't get to see what they're doing. They just kind of like have the skein and then all of a sudden it's like they, uh, you know how like I have a shutter when they oh. cut something off and all of a sudden okay. the object appears. So it's like a before and after. Right. It's all okay. complete, and I like okay. I said, there's been animals on there that I really want to get. <laughs> the pattern for. Start messaging. Where did you get your pattern? <laughs> yeah. Um, they're on Facebook, uh, Pinterest. You can get a lot of patterns that way. Um, mm -hmm. You can also get patterns where it's been passed down through the family. Mm um i think wow. i have i have uh, there's one that i want to try after this is making um button covers and my mm. great grandmother passed that pattern down and i'm the last one that has it oh interesting so i'm gonna see That's how that one comes out. but i really want to see how this turtle comes out <laughs> i'm excited for it so how long do you think the turtle's going to take you to finish if I can master it, get it all figured out, I figure maybe three weeks. Okay. But as it is right now, it looks like about a month <laughs> or two. <laughs> Just as you're trying to adjust to like using a pattern. Yeah. Huh. Um, oh, and to let you know, if uh, my demonstration of the magic ring um, wasn't good enough, you can just uh, look on YouTube and, it's, and look up Magic Ring and it will show you. There are several um, videos from different people, um, some with left hand, some do it right hand. Mm -hmm. And they, I, I absolutely like this one. I forgot to get the website, but she was really good. Um, well, here's what I'll do. I'll find a couple of those those YouTube examples and we'll throw them up on our website in the in stitches section and that way people can kind of find some examples of it too. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I, I, um, if you really don't want to go out and, and 
buy, uh, be, buy crochet hooks, expensive ones. Um, you can go to Walmart and you can get them for about a dollar or something. Or you can go, I lucked out, I found like three, if not four hooks at the Dollar Tree the other day. Oh, wow. But in three or four uh, sizes. And I was like, okay, because I couldn't find all my kit that has all of them. So I was like, okay, I need this hook for this and go from there. Yeah, I fully expect because we're, we're coming into winter time and we're all going to be kind of at home and mm -hmm. not wandering yep. around because of the pandemic that a yep. lot of uh, stores that wouldn't typically carry hobby stuff are going to start carrying hobby stuff. And I bet oh, you yeah. crochet is going to, the prices are going to go down on kits. And I think a lot of people are going to start doing it, which is exciting. Oh, yeah. uh, and then if you're planning on, like, I'm just going to throw it out there, um, say a Afghan or a quilt. I call them Afghans, but um, whatever color you go with, it's best to buy extra than not yeah. have enough. Especially if you're a beginner, I would buy it. Beginner, yeah, uh, with a beginner, yes. Um, like I said, the um, yarn comes in different sizes. Uh, this happens to be, I think, one of the baby soft type. But um, so does softness affect how easy it is to make something? So like, so if I'm thinking about hair, like if my hair is really, really soft, I have a harder time styling it than if it's, you know, like a little unwashed, <laughs> so to speak. So it, it, is, a, is a softer yarn harder to work with than say a less soft yarn or does it matter at all? No, it doesn't matter. Um, the only one that matters is when you, um, have yarn where it's got like um, little feathers coming off of it, I call it. Oh, yeah. And that can, that's to me, knots up too easy. Oh, got you. Yeah, the kind of the shaggy stuff where it's really yeah, pretty, the shaggy. but it's, yeah. but it's, yeah, I imagine that would be really hard to keep untangled. <laughs> yeah, um, unless you're an experience and you know more on how yeah. to work with it. So, so, so Chaslin, don't start with that stuff, like. <laughs> no, go with the baby stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. And if, um, sometimes Joanne throws their yarn on sale. Ooh, okay, good um, to know. I'm noticing that Joanne and sometimes Walmart, but Hobby Lobby, the, it's a hit and miss. Mm. I, you never know when they're going to throw their stuff on hell, on sale. Mm -hmm. so, so outside of sales, where do you typically get most of your supplies? Do you do it online? Do you go into town physically I, and drive into a store? Or? I go into town and I usually go and see what Walmart has. And if they don't mm -hmm. have what I want, then I go to uh, Joanne's before I go to Hobby Lobby. Hobby so you like physically like touching your materials before yeah. you buy it? I like to feel it and, and get a better look of the colors. Mm, yeah, because sometimes it's hard to tell colors from like like an Amazon picture or whatever. Yes. It's just like this may not look exactly the way you think it does. Right. Um, there are, oh shoot. Again, I will look this up, but I believe there is a, there is a company that I had ordered through the mail, uh, making a, a baby uh, quilt for our uh, Afghan for my son when he was first born. And unfortunately, I lost the pattern. <laughs> but um, I lucked out uh, uh, the colors they sent match what was in their book. And I oh, absolutely loved it. That's good. <laughs> so I got to find out what company that was or see if they're still in business. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> That, um, but usually you, you can find some craft places online that uh, has a variety of yarn. And sometimes they're pretty good about what their colors look like. Mm -hmm. but, again, but always kind of think about if you're really, really attached to a color, yep. how, how much do you care if it's not exactly what you see yeah. on the screen? Well, another thing too is, um, well, like we got online shopping always keep at least one of your bands 
so that if the store that you purchase it from runs out and they're not going to get a shipment say until the end of the month and you need to finish that for a birthday gift or whatever you can order it online through amazon or whoever or even where you got it from and have it either shipped to your house or to the store Oh, that's true. Yeah. So then you at least have like the, all the, the information to make sure you're matching your materials. Right. right. Gotcha. That's smart. Yeah. Cool. So Hello. let's see where we're at. We're at about the halfway point. Do you want to okay, switch to me... some cross stitch? Yeah. Oops. Sorry. Where's my, okay. Um, this is a kit that I purchased and it comes with your pattern. Big sheet. <laughs> like so. Oh wow. That's just one side. Okay. That's my other side. Ooh. <laughs> so, so it'll come out looking like this. So what you have is the kit has your thread okay. of all the colors you're gonna need. It has your material. And what I find best, if you can, is do like a stitch on a sewing machine along the edge. To keep oh, it, to keep it keep together? It from, yeah, to keep it from, whoops, you would get an example, from fraying. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Some use, uh, some uh, cross stitchers use what they call uh, fray check. It's like a glue, a sewing glue. And oh, they put okay. that on the edge. Okay. So, some use masking tape. Um, it just, whatever, uh, to me, sewing it's a lot easier. You don't have to worry about it fraying. You don't have to worry about the stickiness or anything like that. Oh, and, yeah, the, the glue would have. Yeah. Yeah. And also the kit includes a needle. Nice. So you have a complete kit. Um, you have everything you need everything you need in a kit and they run anywhere from 90 small ones 99 cents up to a couple hundred bucks it all depends oh. on what you want to do okay um i had inner i had did a quilt where i used i, I crocheted excuse me cross stitched a baby on a crescent moon with a blanket rafting and then I did four corners of the cow jumping over the moon <laughs> and then I did four more corners with clouds with just pieces of the Lord's Prayer in it and I took first place at the county fair down in California but that nice. was years ago <laughs> nice. um, but yeah it just there's all sorts of stuff out there um, there is a thing called counted cross stitch which this is counted cross stitch and that's because there's no pattern on here this is your pattern okay okay and then there is one which i wish i had a picture where you don't have to have the chart um some come with some don't but it's what they called stamp cross stitch the patterns already on the material okay and you just cross stitch it that way and uh, it's another to me that was like a, a embroidery mm, okay so, so with the the kit that you have right there mm -hmm. uh, you have the the pattern that's on a paper and then you have the materials that you need so are you you've got your materials are you laying the paper on top and then threading through the paper or are you just looking to try and match it and then is there two separate for me so uh there's a lot of people will start from the center okay they will fold their material in fours and mark where the center is ah okay and then when they get the pattern out they find the center on there and start from there ah okay I prefer to start up at the upper left corner about, I don't know, a little over a quarter is where I start okay. from the edges. 
So you're going to work your way that way. I work my way across until I get all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Oh, shoot. I wanted to show that we also have what's called a freestyle embroidery medallion. M -A -M. Mandala. Yeah, Mandala. Mandala. Yeah. Um, they also have different stitches that they show that you can do. There's patterns in here that you can um, follow by. And the library also has a very simple cross cool. stitch book. And they have the example of what the picture looks like when it's completed and has your patterns. Oh, that's cute. And how to tell what colors. Again, whoops. Again, it will be right here. Ah, oops. okay. This so so the patterns the are rarely actually like in color. Right. They're always in black and white. Okay. Um, and is that to help you tell like contrast or what's what's the reason for them being in black and white? Do you know? That I'm not for sure other than it's just uh, the way it's done. The way it's always <laughs> done. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, um, you can find different books in your li local libraries or you can buy, uh, purchase them through the mail or at their uh, local stores. Cool. So. And next time when we get on, I'll show you how to start the kit. Oh, perfect. The best the, way. The cross stitch to, kit? Yeah, the best way to do it is just so that you don't have all these knots on the back. Right, <laughs> it'll yeah. It'll look good <laughs> when I show you the next time. Nice. So for anyone who is uh, looking to get into this kind of stuff, um, let's see, what would you, what do you think is easier, cross stitching or crocheting? Cross stitch is easy for me pattern wise, but when it comes to crochet, I'd rather do my own. Ah, interesting. Okay. So then it ends up being a preference on if you want to just kind of make your own stuff mostly, or if you want to yeah. follow a pattern. Right. Gotcha. Okay. And sometimes with the cross stitch, even though the kit comes with all the colors, mm -hmm. you may not like the colors. You can ah. change the colors uh, to what you want. Yeah. Make it your own. Yeah. And again, at your like Walmart and all them. They sell skeins like this. This okay. is how it comes. And you, there's, this one doesn't have a number on it, but I know it's a 310 because it's a black. <laughs> um, but they do come with numbers and sometimes it's a hit and miss. Uh, again, usually Joanne's has it cheaper than uh, anybody else. Mm. And if you get the flyer through the mail from Joann's, sometimes they'll like this many, uh, I think four or six wasps for a dollar. And that's when it's the best time to go down there and grab the colors you want. Okay. So for someone who's never ever cross stitched before, do you recommend that they start with a kit or do you recommend that they just get some material and start learning how to do some of the really basic like movements and, and patterns that aren't part of a kit? Um, I would say if you're going to learn, I would get the uh, the dollar or so uh, kits and that will show, uh, show you how uh, that's where I would start out at to learn how to cross stitch. So it kind of gives you something to follow <laughs> and it kind of it helps right. you see how the process works more than just say doing it freehand. Exactly and um, then when you're ready, you can move to the uh, up the steps and try bigger one. Okay. So so basically, for for all you newbies, you get yourself a kit, get yourself a cheap kit. <laughs> that way, if you yeah. mess up, it's not not a big deal, right. and just kind of go for it, basically. <laughs> and 
um, like the the kit that I have. I mean, you can use uh, what they call embroidery hoops, which is just uh, two rings. You put them together and you tighten the screw. Mm, okay. I like what I think it's called a, a U clip or a C clip. It's got the ring and you squeeze the two ends and you slide it in and you let go and it holds the material. Ah, okay. That one Because we've me, only got two hands and there's so much you got to do. <laughs> right. Um, I prefer the, I call it a C clamp, but I think it's called something else. But they also have um, little uh, stands that you can put the work on. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> the work on. And you can sit there and just while you're watching TV or whatever and stitch. You nice. can have it in front of you or you can just lean back and have it about right here and be able to. Uh, That's awesome. <laughs> and there's it also sounds relaxing, to be honest. <laughs> it is. Um, once you once you get it past that initial confusion, it's it's just something that you can do that's that's almost a little bit repetitive and, and you can kind of multitask and just uh, take a breath and be calm and make you get relax you get very relaxed. <laughs> like if you've had a stressful day, you just like, okay, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna do this, and you all of a sudden mm -hmm. you'll relax. But with cross stitch, one warning. Watch out for the frogs. Frogs? <laughs> There's a saying going around that they, uh, if you see a person say, I, the frog visit me today, means that they made a mistake on their project. And, ah. they, had, and they had to rip it out back oh. to the one point and correct the Mistake. I bet that's frustrating where you where you, you 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 make the mistake but you don't realize it and then you keep going and then all of a sudden you're like oh no <laughs> is it is there ever a point where you've made such a big mistake that you're like I can't save this yep yep does, uh, does there's it, does all, it there's, to everybody it, ha it just happens just about to everybody <laughs> um you just go out get the material and start all over again, even though you don't <laughs> want to, but right. it's either you do that or you just be patient and take it apart as you go uh, to the point to where you can start all over and start it up again. Right. Um, go slow. It's worth it so that you don't oh have yeah. to undo all your work. <laughs> oh yeah. You can't rush through this process. This is not a craft that you can just zoom through. Definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So next time what you're going to do is you're going to show us how to do our first kit, right? Correct. Awesome. That's exciting. I don't have December's calendar, but uh, the program is always the first Tuesday of the month and it's at 11. And so we will, um, what we're doing is we're going to record these to YouTube as or record them and then upload them to YouTube as well. That way, in case you guys can't make it at 11, you can still watch. And uh, the next one's going to be really exciting because we're starting our first project and I can't wait to see it. So I think that's all we've got today. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, I think so. There's no way, good way to end this other than no. just like awkward buys, but that's yeah. where we're at today. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for joining so. us, everyone. And if you've got any questions, if there's anything that you want to see like resource wise on the website, like, so where we could direct you to like certain videos, or if you want a list of Tina's favorite materials or her favorite kits or whatever, we can totally do that. You can either send us a message on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or you send us an email or give us a call. And uh, anything you kind of want to see from the crocheting and cross stitching world, just let us know, ask. <laughs> All right, so I'm Chaslin, this was Tina, and thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you. <laughs>